Hello everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood Wee -wee. Caucasian lady who wants to take you for dim sum. It is a Friday evening in Toronto, Canada, the city that's been under the longest lockdown. I haven't been at a restaurant, like sitting at one or in a cafe or like at a bar for nine months. It's been... <laughs> been crazy. But you know what? I've been food blogging since 2008. It's something I love to do. So I'm going to share some stuff about Toronto, starting with dim sum. This is my all time favorite dim sum restaurant and uh, they do deliveries. Let me just get ready first. The power of makeup. I have ordered an awful lot of food for just one person to eat, but there is method to my madness. Basically I order a meal for myself and then I have leftovers that I know will be left over that I can eat for breakfast and then I can eat for lunch the next day. So one meal, I try to stretch it out to two minimum, three meals, four total insanity. I'm starting with the sticky rice uh, wrapped in a lotus leaf and filled with ground pork. I know it seems intimidating if you've never had it before. I literally did not know what I was doing. What do I do? Do I eat this leaf? Hang on, it's right under my nose. Mm. If you like gyozas, if you like dumplings, this is just kind of like the dim sum version of that. The rice on the outside is sticky rice, which means it's very soft, more like noodly, like the way that noodles would taste when you mix it with pork or beef, right? It has a soft texture to it, but it has like the smell of the lotus leaf, which, cause I'm just like, it smells like lotus. If you've ever had jasmine tea before, jasmine tea tastes different than green tea. And this smells like the way jasmine tea tastes, if that makes sense. If you go to Vietnamese restaurants, they usually serve jasmine tea actually. And Japanese restaurants will serve the Japanese style of um, tea. Inside of this here, there's also this little magical sausage, which everyone's hoping for. It's called Chinese sausage. Sausage. I'll take smorge for 500. It's called Chinese sausage. I'm sure there's an actual name for this that I don't know about. Let me know in the comment section below what this little sausage is called. It's a dried one. So they cut it and they put it inside. It's kind of like the European dried sausage, but the Chinese version of it has different flavors in it. Mmm. Smoky. Mmm. Mmm. Sweeter than our sausages. It's, it's just delicious. Now, I'm not going to hoover the rest of this because I'm going to be full. Oh me, oh my. Eggplant stuffed with shrimp paste. This is that sweeter Asian eggplant that I was telling you guys about in an Instagram video when I was cooking. It's like the thin long ones. They don't require salting and they're not bitter. Then it's stuffed with shrimp paste, which is ground shrimp and other magic. I don't know, love, years of making it, respect. It's just amazing. It's gonna come with a little container here. And that's a sausage you can pour over the whole thing, or you can just put it on the side and dip into it. It doesn't taste salty. It actually tastes more on the sweet side. It is molten lava hot. Every time I go, I think that it's ready. I'm like, it's ready. And then I try to put it in my mouth and I burn myself. Ooh. Look at that. All right, don't be molten lava hot. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. It was perfect. Does anyone else have a happy food dance? You can't help it. You're just like overwhelmed by how good something is. I mean, most of the videos you see me doing things like, no, no. I don't know why I shake my head when I like something so much. I feel like it tells the chef that I don't like it, but I shake my head because I can't believe it. Like the flavors are too good. Everything's been balanced so perfectly. So you can see the shrimp piled up on the inside. Oh man, so good. In the wilderness, the food after eating its food often performs a ritualistic dance, signaling to others the happiness of their meal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at this beautiful little packet of magic, like a little crystal shell or something that you found on the seashore. This is made with shrimp. It's hargao. I love to go with the you wet. Hargao. Get it? Hargao. It's, um, ah, well. Method Man and Fred Durst, I think, did a song and it's really good. It has a catchy little hook. It's like Mmm. 
I never get sick of Hargo. The outside is a very thin wrapper if it's done properly. If it's not done properly and people are still new, it's kind of chunky, so you're kind of like biting through a noodle. This is like, I'm there, but I don't want you to know I'm there. Shh, because it has a beautiful kind of texture to it. If you've ever had mochi and it's not stretchy where it's kind of gluey, it's more of a bouncy texture is all I can say. The inside has plump shrimp and magic. That's all I can say. And don't eat it last because if you leave it closed and steaming for too long, it might get all like soggy. So I'm trying to eat, I'm trying to do this for you guys. I'm like rah, rah, eating the ones that I think require being eaten as quickly as possible. There's a giant shumai here to take over the world. Dun, 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 dun. The meteorite is coming at me. Who will save us? Who will save planet Earth? I will. Martina will. The shumai is ground pork and ground shrimp, and it's been put inside of a more eggy wrapper. On top of it, this is those little tiny fish eggs on top, but it's exactly the same stuff they put in uh, Canadian California rolls when it has that little tiny popping bite, but it's not gonna be fishy and overwhelming. I think these are more for texture, in my opinion. If you like eating dumplings and gyozas and fried stuff like that, you're gonna love this. It's just gonna be a softer version that's not as oily. It's like way healthier for you, hence why I can eat so much of it, right? Right. Vegetables are your friends. This is snow pea leaves in garlic. It's just basically sauteed. It's so tasty and fresh, salted perfectly. You don't need to add anything to it. So what does a snow pea leaf taste like? Well, if you've ever had peas before, if you've ever had snow peas, snow peas are the ones where you can eat the outsides whole. I buy them as snacks and I literally just rinse them off and eat them like chips. They are so good. Because it's a leaf, it has a chlorophyll -y taste, the same way how spinach and kale and lettuce, it's a little bit sweeter. So it has that nice little aftertaste that you get in your mouth when you eat a pea. Mm. I'm using my serving chopsticks to eat. That's a big faux pas. I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have done that because these chopsticks are for both of us to use. Please forgive me. Mm. I mean, if you don't like garlic, this is not for you because it is coated in garlic just to my liking. So the snow pea leaves work really well overnight and the next day because they're so perfectly cooked and they're not overcooked. It means that if you do choose to warm them up again, they're not gonna be like soggy, fall apart. When something's overcooked to begin with, then you just really can't go the next level. I had to stop to make some tea because I was about to have turnip cake. I only learned about this when I went to Taiwan. We had this like amazing trip, which was compacted into a bunch of days. We had a really cool crew of people taking us around Taiwan. Radish cake has the texture of like a mashed potato that's kind of been fried up with little bits of ham and sausage inside of it. When I say radish, I don't mean the peppery red tiny radish that we're used to. It's a daikon, which is like a giant white radish. Consequently, the radish spirit and spirited away. And it's a lot plainer in taste. And so it definitely has more of that mashed potato taste. It's so delicious. And last up, the magical dessert. This is a deep fried sesame ball stuffed with black sesame seeds that have been ground and they add like sugar and just a whole bunch of magic to it. And you're like, wow, because when you eat it, it's like nutty, but it's creamy, but it's sugary. It looks like it's quite solid and it feels like it's quite heavy, but as soon as you touch it, it kind of starts caving in. It's like, it's already crumbling from my touching. Can you see? Let's look, look at how delicate this is. You have to treat it like an egg. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's buttery. It may not be butter, but it has a buttery taste. Oh my God, it's so delicious, but it is very filling. So you really can only eat one. Or maybe two, because I already recorded one earlier and I accidentally ate one. Yeah, maybe two. Okay, time for the refrigeration tips so that we can eat it the next day. Out of everything I ordered, the Hargau is what I eat first. I don't think that it does well overnight. If you put it in the fridge, it can harden. It's really hard to de-harden that. But really, I think you just gotta bite the bullet, suffer a little, you know, and eat that delicious Hargau, all of them. I have lots of snow pea leaves and garlic. I will chop it up and I will put it in an omelet in the morning so I can have that leftover. I'll add like some vegetables on top of it and just eat it like it's a salad the next day. Mushing it up and blending it, adding like cheese or ricotta and like stuffing ricotta with it. That's what you can do. Stuffing ricotta? 
You take ricotta and you stuff it with ricotta. Stuffing a, um, a noodle with it or pasta is what I was trying to say there. You can also use it as a base so that if you do something like fish or chicken or whatever, just super diverse. And I don't think people eat a lot of sweet pea leaves. Mmm. There should. The sticky rice and pork in the lotus leaf, this is really good for the next day. I actually just keep mine like this and I pop it in the fridge and then I unwrap it in the morning. I literally just microwave it. Smells so good. The eggplant stuffed with the shrimp paste, I am gonna put in a separate container because it's quite juicy. The juice will actually spread out and ruin the rest of your dim sum. And we can't have that, can we? No, we can't. We shan't. I won't allow it. The leftover radish cake and the shumai I'm putting in the same container because they're not juicy, so they're not gonna like screw each other up by slowly sogging up the bottom. I have one leftover sesame ball and um, I'm not gonna refrigerate it because again, the outside will get kind of hard. We're gonna see if he lasts through the night. That's right. I'm coming for you. The sun's still out, hmm? Still have the whole Friday night to go through. You don't think I'm gonna, you think you're gonna make it to the next, I don't think you're gonna make it to the next day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Well, I hope this makes you feel more confident about ordering dim sum. I hope it made it feel a little less scary, a little more understandable. If you already know what dim sum is and you plan on coming to Toronto at some point when things return to normal, because things are gonna return to normal, right? Right, you guys, totally right. Please check out Rollson. I'm gonna put all the information to it in the info box below. I have been going to Rollson for over 20 years. Hopefully one day you're gonna find this video and go, yeah, what are you talking about? What was Coldemore? I hope that there will be a time period where people don't remember this and they're just out traveling again. Ah, roll song. You make my heart sing. It makes me so happy every time I eat you. Even my tummy doesn't hurt. Which is a pretty big miracle. Because my tummy almost always hurts. Thank you, BDS. <laughs> Nonetheless, I have to remember that. There are good days, and there are bad days. Today was definitely a really good day. Because I managed to share this amazing meal with my audience. And make this happy little tune. You thought you could escape me, sesame ball? I'm not gonna make it through the night.